Hey everyone! So this historic deck, we got Din Kabui's Prank Kids from December of 2018. This was the first time the deck Prank Kids topped any event, and it was the YCS Milan, Italy. He fought against many fearsome decks like Sky Strikers and Thunder Dragons primarily. In fact, the finals was between Prank Kids and Thunder Dragons, and of course there was other decks in this tournament. But the one that really surprised people, one that hadn't topped anything at this point, was Prank Kids. Now, I am a big fan of Prank Kids, and when I heard about this, it definitely was like, yeah, that's kind of cool. Because I, I really like Prank Kids, it kind of reminds me of Toon Monsters a little bit. And when it first came out, no one really played it. I was, I feel like I was the only one that actually was picking up the cards. Now, it wasn't as good because you didn't have Prank Kids Roxies, and people weren't really quite sure how to, how to play the deck. But eventually Roxy's came out in the, the set after, I believe. It wasn't too much longer until we got Roxy's, which definitely added more consistency. And when it came out, everyone was like picking up all these Prank Kids cards. I remember Prank Kids place went up a lot. So it definitely showed, and even to this day, people still play Prank Kids. And there's many variation of Prank Kids. People use it in Ad Emancipators. People made a Prank Kids Thunder Dragon deck. There's many ways to do prank kids, and it's it's always been a fun deck to me, and I've always enjoyed seeing it top one tournament, especially the one that no one expected to going in, considering so many people played Sky Striker and Thunder Dragon. These are two very fearsome decks for a multitude of years, especially Sky Striker. I think anyone who's been playing in this pseudo modern format from a couple of years ago definitely know it took a lot to kill Sky Strikers. So when it comes with Prank Kids, it, it revolves all around these guys. They keep summoning the other one out. Like, a Dropsies will get either Fansies, Lampsies, or Roxies, and so on and so forth. And they're using these to either fuse or to link into these the old fusion or link monsters that's like them spinning around and they form various wacky, cartoonish, almost Tom and Jerry-like creatures like prank kids dodo doodle do and rip roar and roaster i love that one it's i think it's ocg name is roar dragon which is i mean it's, it's it's a dragon it's a blue dragon it looks like kaido a uh, messed up tune version of kaido but kaido nonetheless rocket ride battle butler weather washer there's so many to pick from bow wow bark and now you have meow moo but that was that was that was after this this one you only had so much and what's really awesome when you look at the the deck is that he definitely knew what he was going up against dinka definitely knew uh, the meta going in which is why he doesn't play a card like king of the swamps to search out polymerization or to use as a fusion substitute because he know it's probably gonna get like ash blossomed or called by the grave because in this format it was at three copies so instead of playing the two king of the swamps what he did instead was play invocation this is basically just another polymerization that won't get you called by the grave there's a lot of ways to fusion in this deck you got the two invocations you have the three polymerizations you have Prank It's Pandemonium, which this card is like a quick play polymerization. And you can fuse basically any of the Prank Kids together to get what you need. So if you have all these ways to fuse it out. And on top of that, you also have Instant Fusion, which will get out primarily your Prank Kids Rocket Ride. So you can get two Prank Kids on the field very easily. And that's kind of the strategy. It's it's a very combo heavy. It's a very complicated deck. It's a lot of playing on turns, a lot of knowing exactly what to get out, when to get out, because there's so many ways to play prank kids. Like, are you gonna get out Weather Washer that will protect your prank kids from being destroyed by battle? Do you spend all your resources to get the battle butler? When it's battle butler, you contribute to destroy all monsters your opponent controls. Or you can, you know, get your Dodo Doodle Doo, which is a, a really awesome one that brings Prank Kids back to your hand. Rip Roar and Roaster is a Link one that, similar to Battle Butler, but this one will destroy all spells and traps your opponent controls. On top of that, with Prank Kids Play, which he's playing two of in this 41 card deck, this card will let you Link during your opponent's turn, and this, along with Prank Kids Place, 
will let you recycle material. You see how it, it's 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 a fusion recycling plant, basically. And some people have played fusion recycling plant in this deck. Uh, for the hand trap of choice, he's playing Ash Blossom because it is one of the best hand traps. It's the one that's popular in this format. He's also playing Pot of Desires, which say what you want about this card you know he played it and clearly first place worked out for him and you know with, with a lot of you're banishing so at least you have all these copies of prank kids because because you look at three six nine twelve prank kids in total you know, you, you can afford using maybe one of your pot of desires you're probably going to have have enough in there i i'm not Personally, a big fan of Pot, Pot of Desires myself, but hey, it's in there. Then you got Terraforming to search out these cards, and of course, the Field Spell Prank Kids Place will let you add a Prank Kids from the deck to your hand. And whenever you do a Fusion Summon, you'll all gain 500 attack. Or if you Link Summon, your opponent's monsters will lose 500 attack. And this can come into play. What was great about this extra deck, though, the one that really helped against Thunder Dragons is Borolo Dragon. This one, if you just steal your opponent's Thunder Dragon Colossus, oh, it's 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 a rough day. Borlo Dragon definitely put a lot of work in for his deck. He didn't really use Nightmare Phoenix, and Totally Awesome was a great card too. Uh, you can actually make it with Breaking's Drop Season. Totally Awesome. If you don't know, it's an Xyz monster that you can detach a an Aqua monster from your hand or your field, so you can use materials on it to negate a, a spell, a trap, or a monster effect. So it's a very powerful Xyz monster, the only one they're playing in the deck. And for the most part, they're mostly Prank Kids cards. You got one Ripper, one Roaster, three Dodal Doodle Doo, one Bow Wow Bark, uh, two Weather Washers, three Rocket Rides, and one Battle Butler. This is a pretty solid extra deck. In terms of a side deck, it's pretty solid too. It's a lot of them more for like combo decks or like Alter Geist, that kind of stuff. Danko Seca. The Dino Wrestler pr Pankratops, not Prankatops. That'd be kind of funny. You know, side frames evenly matched, infinite and permanent. But the deck itself, as you can see, is just a very solid looking deck. There's no frills, but there's definitely plenty of thrills when it comes to the Prank Kits cards. When it comes to my initial idea for the Historic Deck Series, this is definitely in like the top five of the decks I wanted to talk about because it, it just shows that don't underestimate a deck just because no one is playing it. You can still top a deck with something great, especially in this case where it's a deck that I love from the beginning, seeing someone just showing that, hey, this deck's actually really good and it's, it's kind of held up, uh, quite frankly, throughout the years. Again, the thing with historic decks here is I don't want it to be just old decks, but just kind of like decks in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! in general. So if you definitely have any that you want me to cover, let me know. Prank it. Uh, this deck is awesome, and I'm really happy it got first place.